بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وعظيمنا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع نفوسنا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه الغر الميامين الحمد لله الذي جعلنا من المتمسكين بولاية سيدي ومولاي علي بن أبي طالب الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله أما بعد يقول الله في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا قيل لكم تفسحوا في المجالس فافسحوا يفسح الله لكم The first of our salawat in honor of Rasulullah Muhammad صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم اللهم صل على محمد وآله the second in honor of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib. Allahumma <laughs> sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The third with your loudest voices in honor of the Imam of our time, Imam Sahib al-Asr wa zaman <laughs> Respected scholars, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The verse in question, verse 11 of chapter 58 of the Holy Quran, is the only verse in the Holy Book which discusses the philosophy and history of Majalis. The word Majalis is translated in the English language as congregational gatherings. As we know, the religion of Islam prides itself on being a holistic way of life. It prides itself on being a holistic system of values by which the human being can live. It provides you guidelines in the theological sphere, guidelines in the ethical sphere, guidelines in the legal sphere, guidelines in the spiritual sphere, and likewise it provides you with guidelines in terms of the social sphere. The human being is a social animal and therefore the human being requires guidance on the social sphere. In terms of the social sphere, the religion of Islam provides you with a set of etiquettes socially. When one observes these etiquettes, they are able to maintain their discipline as a human being. You find, for example, that within the narratives, there are social etiquettes, for example, how to walk as a human being, how to talk as a human being, how to sit, for example, how to eat, for example, how to engage in interaction with others. One of the most important social etiquettes which the religion of Islam sought to discuss was the etiquette of the social gathering or the etiquette of the congregation. If you look in the Muslim world today, you'll find that there are millions upon millions of people who over the next couple of months or so will sit together in congregations where they'll honor the message of the grandson of the Prophet you find that these are of course known as majalis. These congregational gatherings are known as majalis. However, these congregational gatherings have come under intense scrutiny recently. They've come under intense scrutiny from outside the, from outside the school of Ahlul Bayt and from within the school of Ahlul Bayt. What do I mean? I mean from outside the school of Ahlul Bayt, you'll find an intense scrutiny where there is a malicious attempt to try and lower from the status of these gatherings. This malicious attempt tries to highlight that these gatherings are innovations. They have got absolutely nothing to do with the message of the Prophet. They were not there in his time. And therefore any gathering which he did not institute is not part of the religion of Islam. As an even more malicious than this, would you believe, is some of the rumors and some of the hatred mongering which comes forward and states that the actions which take place in these congregational gatherings are actions against the Sharia. Ah. What do I mean? In Pakistan in the 1980s, in order to fuel sectarian hatred, 
you had a number of books, leaflets and pamphlets which were produced. When it discussed the holy month of Muharram, under the month of Muharram it writes down that in this month a group of so-called Muslims sit together in a congregational gathering, switch the lights off and commit adultery with one another. You find that that malicious attempt highlights the amount of scrutiny that takes place when we come every year for these gatherings and that's from outside of the school. Likewise, at the same time, there seems to be an increasing scrutiny within the school of Ahlul Bayt. What do I mean? I mean that a number of people recently have come forward and said that these gatherings have no real purpose in our life. As in these gatherings, all you're going to hear is the same lectures, repeated by the same lecturers, and you'll find it's always historical issues with no relevance to our life. Many times there are no contemporary discussions from this pulpit. And it's better if someone stays at home and reads a book than sits within the gathering. As in how many times today do you hear people saying, I'd rather sit at home and read a book than come and sit in one of these congregational gatherings. In other words, what do we find? We find that these congregational gatherings have come under scrutiny from outside and indeed from within. And that's why tonight as the introductory lecture, I'd like to examine the philosophy and the history of the term Majalis and its development in Islamic thought. In order that we're able to understand the purpose of these gatherings. And I'd like to dissect this issue in a number of stages. Number one, where is the only verse in the Quran which mentions the word Majlis? And what was the context of the revelation of this word? Number two, are Majalis therefore innovations? Or is there ample evidence that they are part of the religion? Number three, how did Zayn al-Abideen divide Majalis into two? The Battalin and the Tawabin. And what's the difference between the Majalis of the Battalin and the Majalis of the Tawabin? Number four, should these Majalis require a reform? And if they should be reformed, which topics should now start to appear from here? Which haven't been discussed before. And number five, what was the purpose of the first majlis of Zayn al-Abideen in Sham? And have we truly honored that purpose today? Let's examine this and dissect this topic in complete depth. There's only one verse in the Quran which mentions the word majlis. As in if you go to many people today and you say to him that where is majlis mentioned in the Quran? You'll find many who will say to tell you the truth, I haven't got a clue where it's mentioned. As in I know that it's a gathering we go to, but I'm not sure what its origin is. There is only one verse in the Quran and that is verse 11 chapter 58. What's the context of its revelation? The Holy Prophet used to sit down in his mosque in Medina. His mosque in Medina, he made the central hub for everyone to gather. In which way? He wanted to highlight for us that our mosque should be the central place for all of us to come together.